The gentlewoman from New York, Mrs. Maloney, who is also the chair of the House Committee on Oversight and Reform, is now recognized for five minutes. Put it on, put it on, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Lady uh, Waters, for your leadership in calling this hearing. Mr. Powell, first I want to say that at a time when we are still recovering economically from the COVID pandemic and we're facing challenges at home and now in Ukraine, I, I, I think and I feel deeply that the Fed should not be subjected to political stunts in the Senate with boycotts by the Republicans, and the Senate should consider the pending Fed board nominations as soon as possible. Uh, the Fed has an important job to do, and President Biden has put forward uh, qualified nominees, and, and we need to get uh, this done. Uh, so that's just my main point. Uh, with that said, as you and I have discussed in the past, the economic recovery has, been, uh, has not been even, and we still have a ways to go to ensure our economy works for everyone. Just as one example, the black unemployment rate remains at nearly 7%, which is more than double the white unemployment rate. And uh, later today, the Select Subcommittee on Corona Crisis is having a hearing where we will be looking at the, uh, the, the depth of the, of the pandemic's impacts on uh, child care providers and workers and the results that that has on our families and our economies. So I want to ask you about the monetary policy report the Fed released on Friday. The Fed notes that the labor force participation rate remains well below estimates uh, of its longer run trend as a result of retirement and people out of the labor force and engaged in caregiving activities. From both a macro perspective and a micro perspective, what does this drop in labor force participation mean for the U.S. economy and what does it mean for those workers who leave the workforce to care for their children or family members? Well, having, <clears throat> having a lower labor force participation rate now, it's about a little more than a percentage point lower than it was. It reflects a lot of retirements. And mm -hmm. um, you know what it means is that our labor force is smaller. That has consequences, including it's contributing to the labor shortage uh, that we're seeing across, across industries all across the country. Um, if, we, if we had a few more million people working, then we wouldn't be feeling that quite so much. It also means the potential output of the country is lower. Um, many of the people who are not in the labor force are, are, are retirees who have made a choice, but some of them are still people who, um, who want to come back but perhaps can't because of childcare activities or fear of COVID or, or other factors. In any case, it's been uh, the, the, the decline in labor force participation that we've seen has been much larger than that of, of other comparable nations. And it was not something we expected, and it's certainly something that's now contributing to wage inflation and, and actual inflation and, um, and to the labor shortage that we're currently seeing. Oh, thank you. It, it's been announced as a, as a result of the Ukraine war and other uh, disagreements that Russia and China are now uh, moving to trade completely in their currency, no longer using the dollar. And... Uh, uh, Pakistan has flown in to meet with Russia. There's some talk that they may be part of it. Uh, what effect would that have on the U.S. economy if China and Russia no longer use the dollar in certain block trades around the world and with each other? What effect, if any, would it have on our economy? Well, we do benefit from being the reserve currency for um, the main reserve currency for the world. And that really is because we have open capital accounts and the rule of law, and uh, we have inflation, you know, over a long period of time uh, under control, so that the the dollar preserve cons you know, preserves its value, and so our markets are the most liquid, and it's the place where people want to be. Over time, um, uh, the question is, if if some want to move away from the dollar, what will be the effect on us? I don't think it's something you would feel right away. Over time, uh, they would have to create an e e ecosystem, economic ecosystem, whereby another currency becomes, uh, uh, you know, a better, a better currency for them to use. Um, you know, what we can do is we can make the dollar the most attractive currency by continuing to have the rule of law and, and open capital accounts and, and make it an attractive place for people to invest and to use in their businesses. 
there, there wouldn't be any short-term effect of that over time, though. Um, you know, it would, it would, uh, it would. I suppose it would diminish our, our our status as the reserve currency. It's also possible to have more than one large reserve currency, and uh, there are um, uh, there have been times when that was the case, uh, and so it's not really clear. Thank you. My time has expired. Thank you. I yield back, Madam Chair. 